So how do we treat an Achilles tendinosis or tendinopathy? Do we stretch or do we strengthen? How do we deal with this painful condition? That's a big question. It's a big debate on really how to handle this. Um, so in the end of this video, you're going to get three exercises that are going to teach you how to kind of get started and start getting some pain relief today. So one of our natural instances, our instincts are to go ahead and stretch anything that hurts or bothers us. Um, it's a big thing. No one thinks about strengthening you know, right away. They always say, let's go stretch this thing that hurts. It could be your back. It could be your Achilles in this case. Um, it could be a muscle. Sometimes that is not really effective. It can give you some relief temporarily, kind of like just rubbing on something. I kind of rub on this, I feel better, okay? But the natural tendency is everyone wants to stretch, you know, an, an injury in that state. As soon as they feel it, let's go stretch it, okay? Um, and what are we stretching? We're stretching fascia, we're stretching the musculature, ligaments, um, tendons. We're putting some load on something, and just that change of load gives us a, a change in how we feel things. And oftentimes it feels good, but it may not actually be the long-term solution. Now, in the case of an Achilles tendinosis, or sometimes referred to it as Achilles tendinopathy, it's really a degenerative process. It's something that occurs in the Achilles region that's actually a lack of blood flow, an impairment, a weakening of tissues and collagen. Uh, and collagen is a tissue in our body that um, you know, provides stability and, and provides a framework. And we lose some of that quality of the collagen, we get abnormal blood vessel formation in that region and it's really not associated with inflammation it's not inflammatory factors and what you'll notice is, is people just don't do better they don't feel better from taking like an advil or motion or some even even a prescription grade and inflammatory because we're not talking about an itis like tendonitis which may benefit from some rest modification and inflammatory um, this is something that's kind of you've been working on for a while and it's a degenerative process that slowly we need to actually, we're trying to get blood flow into this tendon um, <clears throat> via certain ways, um, but we want to load that tendon. Um, and in cases of Achilles tendinosis, we really want to make sure that we don't rest too long. What we do, what I like to call is modified rest. So a good example of this is you have a runner. A runner has been running, let's say they're doing the marathon grid and they're slowly increasing their mileage. They get to a point where they start developing um, <clears throat> this degenerative, you know, they're getting, they have Achilles tendinosis because they're, they're, they feel very similar and they're very much in the same location. Um, but they feel very similar and, and they won't react to the anti-inflammatories. But we want to make sure we continue to load that tendon and not get atrophy. So we want to make sure we remain active. So in the case of that runner, we may say, let's go ahead and get you on the stationary bike, or let's at least get you walking, as long as we're not provoking that irritation to the point where you can't walk or you can't run. But we want to keep you active. We want you to weight train everything within your tolerance to decrease deconditioning and atrophy, and also not allow that tendon to rest too much. And what we find is the longer we rest those tendons, the worse things get. So we want to do that, and then what we want to do is we want to specifically start loading those tendons. So recently, recently the evidence is that Achilles tendinosis really don't benefit as much from stretching and flexibility. Not that you can't do that at a certain point, but it's really not the key to really getting that rehab process going and changing that and causing new collagen to lie down on that Achilles tendon. We really, we really what we have to do is we have to start loading it and putting some tension through it. Through, and so we actually want to strengthen it. So yes, the answer to the question is stretching is fine. You know, yes, it's good to have some more range of motion. It's, it's, it's a strategy, but ultimately we have to load that tendon and, and get it stronger, okay, by getting more collagen. We want to put a muscular contraction on it. And as it gets more tolerant, often these exercises in the early stages will make it actually feel better. You'll actually have less pain. You may still have an inability to run because you're limping, you don't have the strength. But in the early stages, the exercises we're going to show you oftentimes will actually drop those pain levels down and make you feel more comfortable. So before we give you our, our three exercises that we want to start with, I call them our kind of our phase one exercises. Um, the, the Achilles problem that we're talking about, like this is the back of our foot here. The Achilles actually attaches right to the heel here. 
Okay, if you can see that, kind of comes down. And a lot of times, where our problems are, just this is this is the attachment point. This being my finger, it's a, f a few centimeters above that is where you have that discomfort. They call it a mid substance substance Achilles tendinosis. There's also other tendinosis called insertional tendinosis, and they'll feel like the pain just at the tip here. They'll actually have a lot of tenderness just in that area. Okay, um, but most times is this is more for mid substance Achilles problems. Okay, so in the region we're talking about. You can't you see yourself here. down there. Okay, we'll just cut that out. Okay. Yeah. So where the Achilles that you notice a lot of our problems, we have the gastroc muscle right here. It actually crosses the knee. Okay, it means it you know, affects it, actually bends the knee in certain cases. Um, this is our gastroc. The lower muscle is called the soleus. And then you start blending in. It's kind of muscular tendons and then all tendon. And this is the, the attachment point that we showed on our model right here. Our attachment point right there. So sometimes we'll have pain focally right there. And listen, it can be also other things as well. So you gotta be careful, like there's other things that'll mimic some of these problems. But we're talking about is more of a mid substance, it's kind of more in this region, you'll notice. This is also where we have our Achilles tendon tears, where actually the, the, it ruptures, okay? So this is the area of degeneration, okay? And um, that's the region where you're going to notice some discomfort. And it's, it's often, um, it's very common to have a little discomfort when they do these exercises. Um, being completely pain-free, you're not going to make the same um, improvements as far as these exercises. So a little discomfort's okay, as long as it goes away pretty rapidly after doing them. In fact, when you start these exercises, oftentimes you'll say, wow, I'm feeling that pain a little bit. And then as you do more of those exercises, you'll notice, wow, you know, it's getting better. It actually doesn't hurt as much. Same effort, not the same pain level you're on the right track, you you're probably have the right load for this exercise. If I'm starting to notice pain and it's gradually getting worse, we want to pull back and adjust the load. We don't want to use as much weight. We want to make the exercise a little easier. So to kind of give you some guidelines on how to do this. Um, these exercises oftentimes can be done in place of like an Advil or a Motrin or some of these anti-inflammatories. Because one of the problems too is that when we take an anti-inflammatory, it's been shown to decrease the ability for the body to make collagen, that tissue that helps with tissue healing. So we, if we're kind of dosing ourselves with a lot of Advil, Motrin, anti-inflammatories, we may affect the actual, what we're trying to do is get some collagen to lay down and actually start feeling better. So yes, when you need it, hey, I understand it. But when you can avoid not doing that, that can impact that negatively. So let's be careful about that and keep that in mind. But the important thing is just, we want a little rest, modified rest, and we want to load this tendon to start feeling better. Go. Okay. So we're going to start out, we're going to bring both heels up. We're going to hold it there for six times for 45 seconds. And then we're going to lower back down. We'll take a rest for about a minute. Six times, 45 seconds. The other version of this is you're going to come up on two. You're going to hold on one. Six times for 45 seconds. The last is you're basically going to do a single heel raise. You're going to come all the way up to the top position. Hold for 45 seconds, six times. About a minute in between, depending on your tolerance. So those are the three. That's the progression. Um, we showed you the first one, which is a uh, bilateral or double heel raise. Then we do a heel raise and we hold it six times for a 45 second hold. And we have about a minute of rest in between just to reset, depending on how we feel. Um, the second one is a, you're going to go up on two, 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 two legs and then you're going to then take one away and you're going to load that tendon on that side. Okay. Third one is you're going to go up on a single heel raise and hold that position at the very top of motion where you're putting tension through that Achilles six times for 45 seconds. Now these are the early stages. A lot of people start feeling better. It's a, it's a form of pain control and they really don't know why it works. For some reason it decreases your perception of pain and you feel better. Okay. Uh, but this is the first phase. Oftentimes people will feel better, but they, they don't, they need more strength. Um, they need to progressively load that tendon to start feeling better. So just like taking a, a pain medication or anti-inflammatory, you feel great and say, hey, I can go ahead and get out there and start running and drive. We have to make sure you're, you're taking through the other phases where we slowly increase the strength of the lower extremity and increase the tolerance of that tendon being loaded besides doing just this activity. If you're a runner, we have to get back to other exercises that are much more demanding so we don't take the chance that we're going to get a tendon tear where we, we slowly progressively load that tendon through more of the second and third phase. Um, the last being more sport specific, jumping, bounding, um, 
jumping rope, whatever your activity you're going back to. Obviously, if that's not a goal, you just want to do, you know, you want to get back to a walking program, we may not do that third phase. But those are some of the phases we have to realize. This is somewhat pain control, getting, getting a little relief, feeling better, but we got to get to those second and thirds so we don't risk re-injuring ourselves. And, um, you know, please work, walk away from this that you may feel better, but you may not be healed. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Listen, I hope this helped you out a ton. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, information out there on how to treat these. Um, you can stretch, like I said, but the key, the answer to your question, really, we want to really strengthen and load those Achilles tendinosis or tendinopathies, which are different from the Achilles tendinitis. Okay, so please uh, like, share, um, comment. If you have any questions, I'll try and respond as much as I can. Um, and we'll have some future videos and other foot and ankle conditions. Have a great day.